a lot of hostility in what you're saying. And I'm sure you'll say there isn't, but obviously there is. Not at all. I think it's pretty clear. If a majority white country brings mm -hmm. in a black African at its mm -hmm. own expense, mm -hmm. they still owe him reparations for slavery? Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching the daddy of all race hustlers and a man that we have covered on this channel before. Michael Eric Dyson take on Tucker Carlson regarding the idea of paying reparations in modern day America. Now, the reason why I like to cover these videos play by play is because these race hustlers can be immensely persuasive. And I don't necessarily think that anybody who watches the channel would be persuaded by it. However, there are clearly a lot of people out there who do get distracted by the big words and can't actually laser in on what they are saying and why it's so sinister. And Tucker asks all the right questions in this one. So with that, Let's get into it. Well, Georgetown sociology professor Michael Eric Dyson has a solution to white privilege. He says white Americans ought to create individual reparations accounts to compensate black Americans for centuries of oppression. Professor Dyson joins us now to explain how that would work and why. Professor, great to see you. Good to see you, my so friend. So how would this work and why? Well, yeah. Well, it's in the context, let me just briefly say, it's in the context of a much broader discussion about right. white privilege, white innocence, white American identity, and it's much more complicated than that, and I go at African-American uh, cultures, contradictions as well. And then in the end, when I'm making suggestions about what can be done, many white people approach me and ask me, what can I do? Not in terms of the broad social transformation out there in the world. We all believe in that or argue about it, redistribution of resources or not. But when people ask me, what can I as an individual do? One of the things I suggested, besides being educated, besides participating with other African-American and Latino and other brothers and sisters in social movement, is to do something called an individual repair of uh, inequality. And if they feel inclined to do so, this is for people who are so inclined to seek out a way to compensate uh, individually for what they think is a systemic injustice. So I talked about buying kids computers, um, being able to take kids to school, uh, to tutor them, to be able to do individual things that are tailored to their uh, desires and aspirations, right. such as becoming professionals, uh, exposing them to things they wouldn't ordinarily see. So in other words, it's a, a kind of ethic of compassion joined to a sense of conscience that motivates them to do what they're mo motivated to do. Well, so I support a lot of that. I mean, I believe sure. in charity. What I don't believe in is collective guilt. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm confused by by the phrase white privilege. Well, white privilege doesn't suggest guilt. It suggests responsibility and accountability. The same well, accountability that America talks to no. about people pulling up themselves by their bootstraps and addressing their 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 situations, their communities as being responsible for doing what they're doing. I don't I don't believe in collective guilt, but I do believe in collective responsibility. Responsibility and guilt are synonyms in this case. And no, let me just ask, let's be So Tucker is absolutely right there. Responsibility and guilt are definitely a synonym here, but I would frame it slightly differently in saying that responsibility is just a euphemism. I mean he's clearly trying to hide his true agenda here because he knows deep down that it's sinister and illogical, and that's why he has to try and cloak it with euphemisms. And here is the case that he's actually making when you think about it logically without all of the sophistry. Hundreds of years ago, people who had the same skin color as you, that you may or may not have some tenuous ancestral link to, enslaved people who had the same skin color as me that I may or may not have some tenuous ancestral link to. Moreover, despite the fact that across the population, it's essentially impossible to be able to boil down who exactly were the ancestors of slaves and who exactly were the ancestors of slave owners and how much of the ancestors they really were. Like, did they have a few uncles that weren't and a few uncles that were and a few grandparents that were on the slave owner side, but a few grandparents that were on the slave side, I mean, it gets very muddy when you start to look at family trees. And also despite the fact that even if we could tell, and even if we could perfectly boil it down, it wouldn't even matter. Because nobody is responsible for the actions of their ancestors. And nobody is entitled to reap the social and political grievance points of their ancestors. But despite all of this, he says it is incumbent upon white people to buy the black kids laptops and to begin the Marxist process of wealth redistribution. You see, your crime is that you were born white and you need to feel guilty as though there is something inherently wrong with you due to your skin color and like you have a perpetual debt and you must now spend your whole entire life running on the hamster wheel of self-flagellation and repentance that actually never ends because you'll never be not white. You see what's going on here? This is about power. 
And this is how people use words, ideas, and framing to try and accumulate power. And we must be armed and dangerous when it comes to these ones. And Tucker continues to ask the right questions here, guys. But before we get there, if you do want to shed some of your white privilege, then I have just the way for you. I recently did an Ancestry.com and I discovered that I have distant relatives from a few hundred thousand years ago in the Paleolithic era that were in fact black. So I mean, I haven't quite figured out what this means for me moving forward. I'm trying to process it all at the moment, but if you would like to maybe offer your support and offer some reparations to me, then just hit that like button below and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. If you want to support a black owned business, <laughs> on to the next. Be specific. So um, privilege. I, I'm privileged and I wouldn't deny that not because sure. I'm white because I have a good paying job, mm -hmm. but you're privileged too. Of course. So I am. we live near each other in a nice neighborhood. You're rich. You went to an Ivy League school, unlike me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so you're way more privileged than most white Americans. Well, so why would they? Open but it's not something? Indiv Well, first of all, privilege is contingent upon the context in which it's defined. So individual cases could could have a, an imbalance that people of color could be way more privileged, as you talked about, than the average, say, white person. But remember, during Jim Crow, Jackie Robinson was more privileged than most white people in terms of having the ability to make a good living on a job, but he was still denied access to a water fountain. His kids still couldn't go to the For same sure. school. So I'm saying to you that your argument then seems to be rather uh, vulnerable to rebuff because it doesn't mean economic uh, accumulation can prevent you from experiencing what are essentially uh, racial inequalities. So I think the amount of money you have doesn't do that. Yeah, and in 1955, I think that was much truer than it is now. Well, even now, when we talk about uh, the disparities in terms of people's achievement, they, the, a study was done by Diva Pager at Princeton University that said a black person with a college education had less of a chance to get a job than a white person who had gone to prison. So even now, I'm not talking about 50 years ago, I'm talking okay. about this is going on right now. The disparities are very real. Right. So if I live in eastern Kentucky mm -hmm. and I am unemployed, why am I more privileged than you? And why am I in any way, as you put it, responsible for problems of people I've never met on the other side of the country? Look, I mean, we know that larger forces provide people opportunities or disadvantages. When you come, many people say, let me even stretch it even further. Some people say, look, I came to this country 20 years ago. I came to this country 30 years ago. I didn't, I wasn't advantaged directly by the system of enslavement that prevailed in America. But if you come to this country as an immigrant and you're a white immigrant and you inherit certain privileges associated with people who were already here, that means that that privilege extends to you regardless of the fact that you indirectly benefited from it and you right. did not directly contribute to inequality. The Constitution was written a long time ago, so was the Declaration of Independence. But those ancient documents continue to inform people's lives and shape their aspirations. So uh, let me flip it around. And let me just also note there's a lot of hostility in what you're saying. And I'm sure you'll say there isn't, but obviously there is. Not at all. I think it's pretty clear. It's, that there recogn is. it's recognition of the situation. Okay. It's pushback on it's whiteness that is usually not called out. Clearly hostile. But exactly right there by Tucker. What he's saying is not only just hostile, it's exceptionally hostile. And it can go straight over people's heads because he pads it with saying things like, my white brothers and sisters. White brothers and sisters. And of course, the aforementioned euphemisms, which this guy uses all too often. And it's hostile to the point where in any other aspects of polite society, people would be shunned for this. But let's just call a spade a spade. The reason why he isn't shunned is because he's black and because he's a professor. He is simply allowed to say these things about white people. Just imagine for a moment that we try to take his logic and then apply it in the other direction. It just wouldn't work because people would notice it straight away and they would be disgusted by the fact that you're putting people in a moral box and inflicting collective social punishment upon people due to the color of their skin, because that is obviously wrong. But unfortunately, on the other side, there is a whole industry dedicated to race hustling. He is allowed to do this on national television and most people will not even bat an eye because we're so numb and conditioned to this garbage that we just accept it. Now, if anything, you'd say that that double standard perhaps puts him in a position of privilege. Onto the last bit. Leaving that aside, I will flip around for a sec. If I'm an African immigrant mm -hmm. who comes here, I'm resettled right. from Somalia at public right. expense, mm -hmm. high public expense, right. am I do these reparations too? I think that the people who have benefited from uh, systemic inequity in this country have been overwhelmingly white brothers and sisters. And what I'm talking about is a direct relationship to a notable 
and a documentable and an empirically verifiable system of inequality. There's, no, there's nothing uh, that's very obscure about that. And I'm saying to you that people of color who are here now, who have inherited that legacy as a result of their black skin and their relationship to black culture, okay have to be acknowledged. Well, wait, but, 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 my book, but my book, my book is not simply about reparations. You're reducing I, I know, it I know that to one thing. I know that it's, it's not, but so it's, much it's, larger it's heavily about than privilege. Than but let me just, I really it's about innocence. almost out of it's time. It's about white refusal to acknowledge if responsibility. If a majority white country brings mm -hmm. in a black African at its mm -hmm. own expense, mm -hmm. They still owe him reparations for slavery? No, the, I'm talking about the people who are here. That's a that's an isolated event. I'm talking about the mass, the majority of African American people who are here, who are right. part and parcel of what this country has been, and who have built it in its institutions to become what it is now. Classic obfuscation there, but that's because his worldview is not coherent. It actually doesn't make sense. What he's doing is making vague emotional arguments that don't stand up to logical or historical analysis. And after a few good questions by Tucker, they crumble if you think about them enough. What about all of the immigrants, Tucker says? Well, I mean, if you come here as a white person, then you and your white skin just benefit from the legacy of white privilege. And people with black skin who come here must be acknowledged whatever that means. But then in the next sentence, when Tucker tries to double down on it, oh no, it's not about that. It's about people who are already here and who built the institutions, whatever that means. You see what he's doing here? He never coherently answers a question. He uses terms like, oh, well, they have to be acknowledged. This allows him to just remain slippery. So he can't be actually nailed down to a certain viewpoint. Oh, snack. The slipperiness allows him to sort of slither between answers and evade capture whilst selling many, many books to his echo chamber. I'm a slithery little snake and snake. So guys, that's it for me today. Make sure to hit those links below and find me everywhere else on all of my different platforms. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, make up for a bit of your white privilege, you can click right here and subscribe. And also, if you'd like to watch another video, click right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Jello Snake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous. I'm so slithering and sneaky because I'm a snake. Slithering in your garden, catching me a mouse. Snake. <laughs>